is the acceleration not equal to zero? Because you're you're gonna move. Let's talk about acceleration. I, I stopped and started a new video. So let's talk about acceleration. Um, so, um, and then again, you know, we can look at particular problems. What, uh, before I say that, what, what would be great is if you guys could uh, have a way to uh, interact. And I, I have on there, you know, you can create this Zoom account and you can you can do a 45 minute free Zoom session and share and stuff like that. So I can, you know, just work with me and we'll facilitate. But we want to keep a little, pri and the trouble is like last week, we, the pressure wasn't really on and you got other classes, it's a little, but we want to keep that pressure on to keep moving forward and to see, you again, you're going to see it coming together. Um, so we're talking about acceleration here. Uh, let me, uh, let me get rid of this. So average acceleration is a change in velocity or change in time. Acceleration you do all the time. If you nod your head, you're accelerating. Any, everything you do is accel You're increasing speed and hopefully your hand doesn't keep increasing speed because it'll leave your body. You know, it's like, you decrease speed and then you stop and you don't accelerate and then you're you're doing it all the time and yet it's a very confusing concept and most people have trouble with it nothing wrong with it right uh it's, it's but we can sort it out and so the way to sort this out you know what to put on your pictures the other thing you can put on your picture is this hold on to this now here's some you're gonna have to break some habits you know, we all do, okay? So um, so that's, that's part of the training. So when you're increasing speed, now I don't like to say speed up, even though I sometimes do, because when, an object, when you toss an object, when it's going up, it's slowing down, but not down because it's going up. So I like to say it's decreasing speed, and then when it's going down, it's increasing speed. I have to try, I, in the book, I, was, I think I was good about that. But So let me just say increasing speed. Then whichever way you're going, and let's stick with moving along a line right now. You'll get off of it fine. Don't think too far ahead. Stick with the training. Increasing speed, uh, your acceleration is always in the same direction. So I say parallel to the velocity. In two dimensions, we'll put a little half arrow on top, but um, and we, we, we go back and forth on whether, when we should introduce that, but I think this is good. And so what does that mean, guys? This is, this is really good. Uh, and we'll get it, the subtlety that, that Laura is getting at too. That means that if your velocity is positive by your coordinate choice, then your acceleration is positive, but if your velocity is negative, then your acceleration is negative and you're still increasing speed, just in the negative direction. And one of the worst things we can do, and it happens in high school a lot, and even in college, is to say that a negative acceleration means you're decreasing speed, or to be even more sloppy, slowing down. It's not true, not necessarily. Check this out. Does everybody kind of get that? It's, yes. like, it's like the direction you would be pushed because, by the way, the, the sum of all the pushes and pulls, the net push, the net force, is what's going to cause acceleration. You'll get into that in chapter seven and eight. And by the way, you'll learn it in a way where you'll have to correct your professor often, but that's okay, okay. So that means, Let me show you this. Once we get this straight, oh my gosh, that is tricky. That means that if, if the object is moving to the right, I don't know if that's positive or negative, I haven't told, told you, but if the object is moving to the right, then the acceleration is to the right. Call it positive, call it negative, I don't care. 
If the object is moving to the left, the acceleration is to the left. Call it negative or positive. Everybody cool with that? Yes. And intuit it as though, now, here's another subtlety. And some people think, oh, you just confuse people, but actually the confusion is already there. I'm just bringing it out. Acceleration does not cause a change in velocity. This is a very subtle point. Acceleration simply describes how rapidly your, how much your acceleration. Is it an abrupt change, a lot of acceleration, or a gentle change, a little acceleration? The cause is from somebody else pushing or pulling on you, and maybe lots of things and adding up in a tug of war. That's the cause. This just describes it. Okay, we're almost there. This is it's a lot of the acceleration, okay? And always feel okay being confused with physics. <laughs> but you're gonna, get, you're gonna be getting clear. If I'm decreasing speed, if an object's decreasing speed, then A, and we could say opposite, is opposite V, or we could also sometimes it'll say A is parallel to negative V. And again, that means that if V is positive, then yes, A is negative. But if V is negative, A is positive. Wait, you can have a you can have a negative acceleration and be increasing speed, and you can have a positive acceleration and be decreasing speed. How can I keep that track? You, you don't have to, you just write it down, just show it. Draw your pictures, label your states. That makes sense. Why? Because I'm done with that. Okay, good. Ah. Because if my object now, let's see, is moving whatever this, I don't know if it's plus or minus, but if it's moving to the right and I'm decreasing speed, then I do, then I will say my acceleration is opposite it. But if it's moving to the left, V, then I would say my acceleration is the other way. Again, plus and minus, I don't know. I haven't chosen yet. I'll look at my coordinates, keep it consistent, boom. And that gets you past so much confusion, natural confusion because it's all just a big blur. There's a lot here. But when you get used to it, like driving a car, you actually do a lot of different things when you get in the car, you know, or, or whatever else you do. Word document or video games, forget about it. I have no idea. And you guys like, uh, well, I was gonna say you don't wanna play me in a video game. You do, because you, you just demolish me in half a second. Whatever, I don't, know. I don't know. But you know, there's different things. If you play cricket, then you know, and, and then, uh, or if you're used to baseball, you go, I, what, what are you doing? What is that? So just get to know the rules. Is this okay? I'm still? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's good. And, and it's huge. So hold on to it. Hold on to it. Um, Put it on your picture because it's, it's just moving the pieces. You're keeping it straight. You can't keep it in your head. You can't keep it in your head. I should tell you this one little story. Um, and then I want to get to, to Lori's uh, really good point about zero acceleration. This is a really good subtle thing, but now we're, we're good to go. Okay, real quick, uh, Professor Stanton, she's great. You may, you may know her, and I hope someday you'll actually get to meet her she's, uh, in the math department. And she knows a lot of physics, by the way, so we have fun getting on each other with our students. But um, she was doing some physics, and she came by uh, my office and said, you know, she was doing, 
I don't know, upper vision, thermodynamics, I think, or something. She goes, can I ask you a question? And I go, sure, that's kind of fun. I haven't been able to do some of this stuff. She goes, I was doing this, you know, problem, proving this or that, and I can't get it. And I said, yeah, sure, let me check it out. And, of course, she's a math person, and she's good, and she, so she wrote it out beautifully. So it was like, for me, I could, I could really follow it. And I went like this, do, 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 huh, yeah, that seems right. Go, no, it's not, but it's, huh, I go, do, 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 do. huh, it seems right. And then I said, you know what? I'm doing what I tell my students not to do. I'm doing it in my head. I got out a piece of paper, I was doing it. And there was a teeny, tiny step, a teeny assumption she had made. It was like, ah, it was fun, right? It was a puzzle. It was like a little, you know, a riddle. Until I wrote that out, I went right on past it. Because my brain was, you know, we make these assumptions a lot. You're going to hit them. That's okay. And when you're engineering something, that's why you work in teams or whatever. Or you're a doctor, you, you know, you, you check each other. You know, and the more you can lay it out, the better. So that's what we're learning, it's powerful. I think it's the most powerful ch chapter, uh, but we're gonna reinforce it. Plus or minus is a choice. And there are good choices, and a good choice makes it easier to think about the physics, and it makes it easier to calculate the physics sometimes, sometimes it doesn't matter, and it also can make it easier to encode it into computers. But, um, but often it doesn't matter, and you just choose it and go with it. There are gonna be a couple of little tricks that are clever that you wouldn't think of because you don't have time. And if you, that was your gig, then you would think about it. Okay, so on our sketches, we're going to do this, and among the variables, we're going to do this. Now, let's think about driving. And, and people that don't do math and everything, and they do philosophy, they often get confused by this. Because they're doing what? They're in their head. And I, and I don't mean to put anything, put it down. Philosophy folks are great. Um, but, and this is the profound thing of Galileo and Newton. You're driving a car. I'll give you a couple examples of driving a car. If your velocity is zero, I'm gonna call it state two. I don't know what you I don't know what you were doing before, you were doing something before, state two. But your velocity is zero. Now if you're having T, then V3 is zero. And during t time, acceleration two to three is zero. But at some point, you got to get up and get to work. Or maybe you're working. I like to sit at cafes and work. Um, but at some point, you got to go. So during that time, your acceleration was zero. But if at, if at v3, you get up to go, when you start, this is tricky, you have to start going. Now, cheating a little bit, jump into chapter 7 of, of my book, at least. You do that by pushing off. And you push something backwards, it pushes you forwards. Ooh, that's chapter 7. But, so, you have a zero velocity, but it's changing. You're accelerating. So then you have this, but then a three happens when your velocity is zero. I mean, if you pull up to a stoplight and stop, right? And then you think, hey, my velocity is zero. My acceleration must be zero because my velocity is zero. And then it turns green and you go, I can't go. 
And you go, why not? Everybody's honking at you. Yeah, but V is zero. If V is zero, A has to be zero. I can't, I can't go. <laughs> and they're honking at you. And you go, no, but A is zero. My V is zero, so my A must be zero. And then your friend punches you or whatever. So then you hit the gas pedal and you will accelerate, but you've got to start at zero. With a graph, which we're going to graph in chapter three, time and velocity, you can sit there, have a zero velocity, but at some point you can get up to speed. And so at that point, you're going to change. And how steep that curve is, is how abruptly, you know, maybe you slam on the gas because everybody's honking at you. Or maybe you do it gently. So you can have a steeper or more gentle increase, change in velocity over a change in time. You can change it in less time or more time with that gas pedal. But the, so the, it's hard because from here to here during T time, it's zero. From here to here, my slope, you're gonna see, this is chapter three, my slope is zero. But from here to here, whichever one, I have a slope and that slope is the change in V over change in T. That's gonna be in units of say miles, let's do, let's do miles per hour every second, S, or meters per second per second. We're gonna work on that in the next couple of chapters. So don't worry about that. But the point is here the acceleration is zero and here it is not, you are changing velocity. And so right at that moment you have to. Now, this curve, I've just lied to you. Because in reality, it's gotta be gradual. It's gotta be, uh, it can't be a sharp corner. We say no, no sharp corners in physics, not in the real world, unless you deal with quantum mechanics and whatever. But um, so there's a gradual kind of change and that's the kind of thing we won't get into, not, certainly not in an introductory. You know, if you need it in life, you'll, you'll build it because you actually will have learned your physics. And so too, when you're coming to a stop, and I have one more really good example for this, but first, Lori, is, that, is this getting at it? Uh, so um, if you're moving from uh, uh, two to three uh, at, wait, no, hold on. Uh, you, you're having T between two to three, but then as soon as um, you uh, move out from three, the acceleration is not zero. Right, uh, and that's, so, uh, you go. So say, for example, I travel to uh, five, and then five is my destination. I, I stop there, right? Um, so the uh, acceleration at state five is it zero or it's, there's some uh, there's some you know number. Perfect. You guys, this is a little thing that is a big thing. Um, it's really confusing. And then what do people do when they get confused, usually in a physics class? They just go plug in numbers in the equation. <laughs> but we can get this straight. Watch. Right now, let's look at this thing. The acceleration is zero. Velocity is zero, acceleration is zero. When I start, the friction on my hand, or if you want my hand, starts pushing it. So I still have to start from zero to get up to speed. So I'm going to push it that way. It's going to go faster and faster. Now, once I'm walking, if it's the same speed, I have no acceleration, all right? I'm not changing, but the minute I slow down, if you really do a slow-mo on that, which is really cool when you see the ultra slow-mos, it'll be going the speed and then slowing down. Then the acceleration is this way, right? When I increase the speed, it's this way. When I keep the same speed, it's zero. When I decrease the speed, it's this way until I stop, and it's decreasing all the way until V is zero. Watch how that looks. Watch how that looks on the graph. Decrease speed until V is zero. Now, there are different processes. You could decrease speed until it's zero and stop and have another cup of tea, <laughs> in which case you would keep 
the velocity is zero. In that case, the acceleration is zero while you're having another cup of tea. Or you could do like this ball, decrease speed, so the acceleration is opposite. Stop only for an instant and increase speed. Let me show you this again one more time. When you get this, it's a big deal. Then, then all your math will do a lot of the work for you. So as I increase speed, velocity and acceleration same direction, keep the same speed, acceleration zero. Decrease speed, acceleration's opposite my velocity. If I stop and sit there, there's no acceleration. And, and, I, and Laura, you're really getting at that transition point. You know, when V is, v is zero, but changing. Or when V is not zero, but slowing down to zero. So at the instant you're coming, you just, oh, you see, let me, this, I think this one's gonna help. And this will be maybe our target for the day. Not too long, okay. And don't underestimate this, because just think of Galileo dropping cannonballs. It's huge, it'll open up so much. And, and I would, while I'm doing this, let me just tell you that I, there are a couple of things that got me into teaching. And one of them is fellow grad students that really didn't understand this stuff. I mean, they're cranking the math out and doing this and getting through the classes and finding ways to do well in the exams and everything. <laughs> they didn't understand the physics, which is a little scary, but it's very common. Even when we interview people to teach, I ask questions like this and people have their PhD, they get it wrong, stuff wrong sometimes. Not all of them. We got the person currently teaching part-time here is excellent and the people teaching here passed that test. Um, check this out. I, there's a variety of reasons why I could just sit here and do this and just that is so weird in so many ways. Uh, we think of gravity as Earth pulling on this thing. First off, we think it just does it. And then we start to think, okay, Earth is pulling on it. And then we start to think about it's doing, it's decreasing speed and increasing speed because of warp space time. And that's just, but nonetheless, we can just describe what's going on. And so as it goes up, you can tell, right, first, now we may or may not include my hand. So that again, depends on the problem and the process, the puzzle. We can talk about my hand is going to, if I start here, in push and increase the speed while it's going up, right? So it starts at zero, well, usually we pull it back. So then I, I go here, I'm gonna push. It started at zero, I push it, increase the speed, pull it away. It's got some speed and then it's gonna decrease speed stop, but it doesn't get to have T, it stops for an instant, right? I mean, if you guys, if anybody could show me how to throw that out, I, I really actually want to rig this up as a little, uh, a little demo trick, like where I throw it up and then it just stops. It'd be so cool, right? <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, yes. Uh, but anyway, it stops, but only for that instant, not for a delta T, but for a T, and then it goes like this. Now watch, watch what that means. The calculations are easy, especially if you've subscripted. See, the calculations are gonna be easy for the most part. You'll get better at some of the algebra. So I'm gonna throw this thing up. State one, I can put the one there or there, whatever. And if I, let's say that, you know, well, uh, here's my hand. So, whatever, let's, let's just do it. Let's just say uh, V 
one equals zero. This is my hand. Any notes will help because you know you're going to forget things, right? And I'm going to start pushing. So then from here to here, I'm going to have an acceleration, and I'm going to say one to two is up. And then when I let it go, release. Then I got some V2. at time two, whatever it is. Position, I'm gonna use Y for vertical, it doesn't matter. So from here to here, I pushed it in an acceler increased speed. Now, that's not free fall, but we call it free fall, even though it's going up, so I like to call it free flight. It's gonna be going fast, fastest when I release it, but it's gonna decrease speed, so it's gonna go far here. But it is going to decrease speed, so I'll draw a shorter arrow. I'll say V3. And then if I'm taking pictures in equal time, that strobe I talk about, then it's not going to go as far. Let's just make it stop right here. And let's say that's the top. Little notes, V4 equals zero. Trust me, this is going to make, everything else is easy. This is the harder part. But again, it doesn't have T, and so it's going, you know what it's going to do. While it's doing this, it's going to be decreasing speed, and then on the way down, if it's the same amount of time, it's actually going to pick up the same amount of speed. I'll draw it up to the side, even though it would be here. So I'll make the arrow the same length. You know my saying, the glory's in the details. It's really true. You don't get to moon without getting the details right, right? So it's all about the detail. That's cool though, that's the fun part. V5, same amount of time is gonna be here, except going the other way. Ah. V6, same length of an arrow. My calculations will give me the numbers, that's fine. And so on. Notice, as it's going up, what direction is the acceleration? Uh, down. Thank right. you for not saying plus or minus. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't told you which way plus. It's down though, right? Yeah, I, I remember back in my physics class. <laughs> well, you know, and, and, some, and some professors will emphasize someone in books. And then from the top down to here, what direction is the acceleration? Uh, it's both. Is it going up? Down? So it's going down an increasing right. speed, right? So here it's going yes. up and decreasing right. speed. Here it's going down and increasing. So since it's increasing, and at that top, it isn't having T. It's changing. It decreased speed down. It increased speed down. And it doesn't float and have T. That's tricky. Now we have a letter for this and, and one of my other, ugh. so many things that just, it's like, are we trying to confuse students sometimes? Um, people are busy, whatever. So we often call this, so what I call it is free fall or free flight acceleration. And we write that as G. And people call that gravity. It's horrible. It's not gravity. You could say it's acceleration due to only gravity with negligible air resistance, or just call it free fall acceleration or free flight. I like free flight because flight is like you throw it in the air. As long as the air is going to affect it. But if we neglect that in our calculations, then we call it free. No wings, no rockets. And so it's equal to G. And this is still G. And G is equal to down, which is plus or minus. So you can put the plus or minus sign in once you choose. But until you choose, that's still going to be down. You change your coordinates and you don't let go of something that speeds up that way. That'd be really cool. And then it's, uh, if you want, depending on your units, 9.80 or 9.79 or 9.81 depending on what you are, meters per second, every second. 
which you will see. You'll get to that next. You'll be working with that in the next chapters. So there's a value. But that's getting into the numbers, which is good. We're getting in. That's where chapter two and three and four go. Sorry for an interruption. I just had a quick question. Yeah, please. Um, would you upload these um, Zoom calls to the astronomy coach? I mean, not the astronomy, the physics coach? I am. In fact, channel? what I'm doing is, is that, and that's exactly what I was thinking that I would do. Um, I recorded it on my phone. Uh, hopefully it's clear. We'll see. And I think what I might do is create a playlist for like Physics 101 playlist. Yeah, because not everyone, not one, everyone's here, and I think that everyone would probably benefit from seeing this. Is this helpful? Yes. 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 Okay. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Good. Yeah, and I thought it would be, you know, and, and um, yeah. So cool. So um, so we 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 can we can we can. I mean, I'm happy to work with you guys. This is makes me feel better because otherwise you're floating out there um does anybody want to address any i'm going to put a press stop on this and